Although space weather this past week has been a bit of a fizzle, it does look like activity is beginning to pick up. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see the cluster of regions in the north. These were the big flare players that were firing off some decent-sized solar flares and some mini solar storms. Sadly, the solar storms really never manifested much activity at Earth. They all kind of went south of Earth. Wasn't it just our luck? But these regions are now rotating to the sun's far side. Then on the 13th, we actually had a filament eruption that launched a solar storm. This is partly Earth-directed, but once again, it looks like it's going to go south of Earth, and we may not get much of it either. If we get any impact, it'll be sometime about midday on the 17th. But the big story is a look past that in the south, and you can see this massive coronal hole. This coronal hole is going to be giving us some fast solar wind in about a week's time, and that could bring us some decent aurora. Now, granted, this hole has not got the right magnetic polarity to give us sustained aurora, but it could give us a decent burst of it for a short period down to mid-latitudes and definitely up in the high-latitude regions for a couple days. So that's what's the big story when it comes to aurora players, and hopefully Aurora photographers will be able to get a decent show after a week of fizzles. Now, as we take a look at our far side, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see those regions in the north rotating off of the west limb in Stereo's view, and then you can also see that massive coronal hole in the south. Yet, look just past that to the east limb. You can see lots of bright regions gurgling and flickering like that. Well, this these set of regions, it means that they're growing when they flicker like that, which means they could be big flare players. If nothing else, they will definitely keep that solar flux uh, boosted into the, the triple digits uh, and also keep that radio noise a bit alive on Earth's day side. So at least amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to have a continued uh, noise on the bands. And for space traffic, well, we'll just have to wait for these regions to rotate more into Earth view to see whether or not we have a risk for big flares once again. For more details on this week's space weather, including how that big coronal hole or those new active regions could affect you, Come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.